Hi there, welcome to my channel. Imagine this. Thousands of students and teachers are venturing into the cyberspace for the first time in the coming days. As a result of the highly contagious and novel coronavirus COVID-19, most schools around the globe have been forced to move all classes to an online format, and this event has presented challenges to both the students and the teachers like you. Are you ready for this? Do you feel nervous and unprepared for this new normal? In this special episode of The Biologist, I have created a list of advice and guidelines for you on how to get ready for your very first online teaching. So don't skip this video and give me a few minutes of your time and maybe I can help a little bit so you can prepare better for your new challenge. But before we begin, if you are new in my channel, please click the like and subscribe button below. Also, if you like this video, give us your comments and ideas below and share this video to your teacher friends. Get familiar with your preferred or required online platform. The online delivery of your class can be a challenging prospect, as switching from on-site to online is a significant change and can be overwhelming. However, the academic quality and rigor of your course should not be determined by whether it is on-site or online. Develop your course the way you would ideally like it to be delivered. And this is the reason why you should be familiar with the ins and outs of your online platform. Teaching an online course can actually be an opportunity to create a more engaging, interactive experience for your students if you take full advantage of the available technology and features of your online platform. Create and provide interactive lessons that are engaging for your students using a variety of strategies and free resources. And most importantly, use your existing resources. It is unrealistic to expect that you, on your own, will produce a semester's worth of high-quality videos. You can use pre-developed resources available online and provide students with clickable links. There's a number of free web applications and sites such as Moodle, Socrative, Edmodo, and Blackboard. And you may want to include a range of functions to create interactive learning activities such as quizzes. Always check for YouTube videos to look for step-by-step -step guides in creating or using them. I'm sure there are tons of them that are widely available online and you do not have to recreate the wheel. Follow lesson format set by your school or department. Prepare and check your technology and equipment at least a day before your first online teaching. If this is the first time you will be doing an online teaching, you may want to rehearse and record how you will deliver your lesson online so you can anticipate possible errors and problems. Check your room lighting and your surrounding and make sure it is free of any distractions. Log on a few minutes before your class ahead of your students. During your teaching session, check to make sure your computer is charged your camera is on, and your speaker is connected. Provide daily contact with your students. Seek guidance from your school site administrators regarding this process. Wear appropriate clothing during your online session with your students. Be in a camera view, speak clearly, and in modulation. Be focused on your objectives and agenda for the lesson and give specific instructions. When you give instruction, be very explicit and specific. Provide also a printed copy of your instructions so students can always go back to it to check. Use it as a visual prompt. After giving instruction, check if they understood by asking questions regarding the instruction. When you give a homework to watch that runs longer than 15 minutes, Tell the exact parts they need to watch. This can even make students more curious about the video that they will watch. When you provide more than two resources, label them in the order you want students to approach them. Simple numbering based on the level of difficulty or importance of each resource item can be of great help for your students. Be attentive to students and encourage participation. 
establish reasonable protocols and expectations that will guide your students during the discussion, collaboration, and participation. When you create quizzes, you should make sure your questions can be answered by referring to the given learning resources or your lecture. Set reasonable time for completion of work. Be flexible if you think your students will need more time. When you ask students to write a summary of an article or a video, you should make it clear that, that this is not a full-fledged report. Making this as a required assignment but a manageable task will produce the best outcomes and responses from your students. A set of 10 to 15 quiz questions or a 300-word limit will be sufficient to engage students for 30 minutes. Have your lecture, worksheets, homework, assignments, and resources available in your online platform. And make sure they are open access to prevent access problems for your students. That will actually save you time responding to an inbox full of student emails wasting your time fixing it. Spend a few extra minutes checking this and I'm sure it will save you headache later. Also, you may want to prepare a soft copy of these for students that do not have internet or have poor internet access and may request a copy in person. Create PowerPoint or lecture videos to guide your lesson flow and to provide visuals for your students. You may want to test your PowerPoint slides on a mobile device before using it in your actual lecture or shooting your lectures, so all texts are readable on small screens. Who knows one or two of your students will be accessing your online class on their mobile device. Also, double check your font sizes, colors, template designs, screen ratios, and images. Record your lectures. Don't stream them. Or if you are streaming your lecture, record it. If students are unwell or are struggling with poor internet access and missed your lecture, you can send them your recorded videos or they can access it in your online platform so they can watch it in their own time. Also, by recording your videos, you will be able to edit it, keep the most important part of the lecture, and have shorter lecture videos for your students. The academic literature is brimming with articles and books supporting and propagating that lectures should adhere to the 10 to 15 minutes attention span that is characteristic of modern students and anything longer than this can cause issues of slow transfer of knowledge and destruction. If you have more to say, you may record two or three short videos focusing on specific topics. Use group communication for general concerns and information dissemination. Set up virtual office hours for direct teaching or one-on-one -on -one conferencing. When you are giving out handouts, general information, group announcements, or anything that is for all students, use group communication or the group chat feature of your online platform. In MS Teams, you can post this in the chat page or in the class notebook. Set up virtual office hours on video conferencing tool like Zoom for direct teaching or one-on-one -on -one intervention. Have a specified time for students to confer with you one-on-one. -on -one. Log in at the appointed time and wait for students. Focus on providing social support and checking if any issues need to be addressed immediately. This can be a great way to collect students' feedback on your online teaching as well. Make meetings optional and be relaxed. Don't be frustrated when no one shows up. Students are still happy to know that this option is available. Provide opportunity for students to take control. Set up online group spaces for small groups of students and ask them to support and consult with one another before sending emails to you directly. Provide conversation stems or conversation starter guides and post a couple of questions to help students break the ice and start a conversation. Encourage and allow students to use the communication tools they prefer. Of course, some groups will surely click well and some will not. But anticipating what could happen during small group consultation and acting on them can make students feel socially supported and reduce the number of email inquiries you will receive from parents and students. Prepare and send homework using your online platform. Homework must reinforce what was taught during your online session with students. Be mindful of how much work is given to students. Grade work and post-grade in a timely manner. 
provide feedback to students on assignments so they will meet your expectations next time. Be honest. Don't hide your feelings and show some vulnerability. Online teachers' emotional openness is a great instructional strategy and being vulnerable in the classroom takes a lot of courage. However, it shows to our students that even though we are their teachers, we are not experts in all things and that we are still willing to learn new things. Tell your students that it is your first time teaching online and you are learning while teaching. Explicitly ask them to help you, reassuring them that you will do your very best to support their learning as well. They will be sympathetic since they share the same emotions and you will be set up for success. Repeat the same structures, protocols, and strategies. Students do not like frequent changes in their day-to-day -day structure and learning style. They are blissful to repeat the same structure and protocols and may participate more if they are confident and familiar with the strategy that they are using. However, make sure to have varied activities and assignments. Reflect on your teaching so as to make the necessary modifications for your next session. Teach and reinforce good hygiene measures such as hand washing, covering cups, and appropriate use of face coverings so students will be prepared once your school transition to a hybrid or face-to-face -face teaching and learning. Lastly, you deserve a pat on the back even if you have to do it yourself. Like you are to your students, be nice to yourself as well. If you are insensible to the wonderful things that you do each, each and every day for your students, force yourself to see them. Conversely, if you're not doing enough wonderful things, this may encourage you to do more. One of the nicest gifts that you can give someone is a sincere compliment. Maybe it's time to start talking to yourself and giving yourself this small favor. Teacher, you are awesome. That's it for this episode. I hope that you find at least some of these advices helpful. Keep in mind you are in control and you can do wonders. Have a wonderful year, teacher. That's it for now. I will see you next time.